Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I'm propagating this African violet. It's a purple and white flowering variety, although it comes in a lot of different colors for African violets. And what makes them interesting as a subject for propagation is that you usually propagate African violets from the leaves, not the stems. They leave you very little option because there's no stem emerging from the ground. Uh, you either have to go back to the crown or you try it with the leaves. And they happen to be one of the few plants in the plant kingdom that propagates easily from leaves. Other things might th be things like begonias, crassulas, sedums, sansevieria, or I showed one other thing on this channel here was when I did Christmas cactus or uh, Thanksgiving cactus, which also does from those leaf sections. So I'm going to cut off a piece of leaf here and you can see, I'll give you some close-ups of this as well, that you have the leaf pad up here. And then this part here, this leaf stalk, is not truly stem tissue, it's just part of the leaf stalk. So what I'm going to do is cut that back right here and stick it into the potting soil down here. I've got a few already stuck down here. And in fact, this one here has been uh, down in the soil for a couple of weeks. It fell off earlier, so I, I trimmed it and stuck it in. And there's already some signs of callusing on there. I'll give you some close-up views uh, as we do this. Now, one different thing about the setup here that you'll see is that this is just an open bowl. Uh, open tray would be fine. Uh, but what I don't have on there is what I would typically use for my stem cutting propagation is these humidity domes. And inside of here I have some uh, rosemary that I took from cuttings and are sticking for next year. And the humidity in that case helps them to not dry out. But what's in common with all of those different plants I mentioned, the begonias and the crassulas and the sedums, is that they all tend to be a little bit thicker in tissue and so they don't tend to dry out very easily. And in fact, if you were to cover them up with a dome, they may just rot. So I'm gonna take a few more cuttings here, get you some close-ups, and then I will uh, reconvene in a few weeks when I'm showing that these are rooted. All right, so here's a close-up of the same process. Just reach in here, grab a piece of the leaf, and it doesn't need a big, long section of petiole there. Just a little one is fine. As far as I'm concerned, any extra tissue that's sitting under the soil is just an additional reason it could rot. So then I'm going to stick it in here and just have it in contact with the moist potting soil. I'm just using a peat and perlite mix here. I just wouldn't use garden soil because it'll make it more liable to rot. Here's another leaf. Stick it like this. Little one centimeter section of uh, leaf stalk behind that leaves not overlapping each other really uh, so that there's nice surface there and we will see how these guys do as for the mother plant itself these flowers are nearly spent i can see them browning out and not a lot of new buds coming so what i'm going to do in this case just to clean it up and let it recover from the amount of leaves i've taken off so i'm just going to take off the flowering stems and let it start to recover using its energy for renewed leaf growth. That is and hopefully I haven't stripped it too too badly and I will put those under the lights and let it recover. It is results time for the African violets and I think I've shown you this room before. This is where we take our propagation projects during the winter. Controlled temperatures, we also get some natural light and some artificial light due to LED panels that we have mounted above the table here. But what we're really here to look at is the African violets. And so I'm going to close in on here a little bit and you can see that the mother plant, that's the one sort of center foreground here, has recovered. It's got new leaves on there. It also has new flowers with that white and blue tone or white and purple tone to it just emerging now and now the next one i wanted to show you is this one in the back now you'll recall that one of the leaves had fallen off before the first video and i just stuck it into the soil and this is the one and it has it had callus last time we saw it now it's developing a crown of its own and that's what the african violets will do is with that leaf they'll develop some roots at the base and then they'll start to push new shoots all around there and you'll get this ring of leaves and if we look real close into the bowl here we'll see that's happened on a number of the rest of them as well in fact i would say 
all of them and let's pull some out and get a closer look at those so we can see the roots and see that crown but i can say definitely that leaf propagation was super easy and rewarding it didn't take any additional intervention after that first just cutting and putting onto soil as you can see 10 out of 10 leaves rooted making this a very easy propagation method for african violets but not for all African violets, and I'll just post this on the end here, is that the very coolest of the African violets are the ones with the pinwheel patterns on the flowers. Those ones are chimera, meaning genetically, they don't have the same genes in their leaves as they do in the center of the flower, and they have to be propagated from the flower stalk. So remember when I was cutting off my flower stalks? On those, there's actually a spot that has a little leaf set, and you can propagate from the centers there, which is kind of a cool, almost more like micro propagation. And it's something that I think is cool enough that I might have to explain what a chimera is genetically and do a video on how to do that propagation in the future. Uh, so stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. Other than that, if you have any questions on this propagation method, feel free to go ahead and drop those into the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.